Welcome to the Skip and Shannon Undisputed Podcast. I'm Elika Sadegi filling in for Joy Taylor. You can catch us Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on FS1. Here's what this podcast is all about. It's an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the day's show, and there's a lot to get to in today's podcast. We have a Valentine's Day edition of Undisputed today. Chris tells us no doubt about it because of the beef with Westbrook, we are missing how good of a year Kevin Durant is having. Nick believes that Tom Brady can play for another five years and brings up a great Michael Jordan comparison. Fox Sports NBA analyst and host of the In The Zone podcast, Chris Broussard, comes to the debate desk to share what the Kevin Love injury means for the Cavs and the rest of the NBA. Nick and Chris break down the report that Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather have agreed to fight and offer their predictions of how this bout will look. Finally, there's a lot of Scarlet and Grey on set when another Buckeye, Mr. Jim Jackson, joins us to explain why the 2017 Warriors are not as good as last year's Golden State Warriors. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. Did you get my flowers, Cece? Look, that's all I'm getting from you? What? Uh, yeah, so we'll, may, we'll see how the show goes, but at least flowers is I've, a starting off. We've point. been going steady for more than two months. I expect more than flowers. I think oh, chocolates okay. to our standard. <laughs> what? Chocolates and flowers? Yeah. You're getting a little presumptuous. Did you me. get them something? What? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a good question. How many gifts did I get you before okay, Valentine's Day? Oh, every okay. day is Valentine's take. Day okay. with Chris yeah, Carter. It's a good take. <laughs> it's a good take. We have breaking news. An Irish newspaper, the Irish Sun, is reporting that Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor have agreed to fight. The report is that the contract has not been signed, but the two sides have agreed on terms. The fight could be announced in the next two weeks. Nick, what's your reaction to this? I, I'm happy for Conor McGregor because this is a chance, I would imagine, for him. I looked online during the break. The the internet says his net worth is around $25 million. I would think this is a chance for him to double or triple his net worth. I think he could probably make $30, $40, $50 million from this fight. Uh, And I hope hope that money's worth it, because he is drawing dead to win (coughs) this fight. Like, you, you cannot ask someone that's not a professional boxer to go in the ring against the most technically sound boxer that I have ever seen. Now, I am a little young, so I didn't see Sugar Ray Robinson. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there I, I, the, I've, only see, I've seen a, almost all of Ali's fights, but mm-hmm. it's a different style anyway. Mm-hmm. I, so I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not the, a boxing historian that can tell you where Floyd ranks in the all-time pantheon. What I can tell you is, since I've been watching boxing, Nobody ever has been harder to make clean contact with than Floyd. So it is it, the idea that McGregor could go in a boxing ring and have any chance at winning. Everyone's like a puncher's chance. A puncher's chance only exists if you can land the punch. I don't think McGregor could. So yeah, I'm sure everyone will get rich. It will not be entertaining. It will the the. The lead-up will, I'm sure the way they market the fight with the Irish Conor McGregor against the bad boy Floyd Mayweather, I'm sure there'll be some, let's call it, tenseness there. But I I don't think the actual fight itself will be any good. I thought that if this fight ever happened, it would be made on these terms. That that's the only way that Floyd would ever participate in anything because there's no way that he would fight UFC style. Because he'd be drawn dead in that situation. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, it's just like Usain Bolt. He's very, very fast. And the NFL is a fast league. But he can't play in the NFL. And the reason why is because the technique that it requires to be a wide receiver, do you, do you think he could? Well, that's why they booked this fight. <laughs> because they, th- they thought Conor McGregor, supposedly the baddest man on the earth, could get in a boxing ring with boxing rules, boxing gloves, and fight Floyd. I think he's at a distinctive disadvantage because this is not his game. This is what Floyd does. And if you think Floyd ran the last 10 years of his life, not only running in the ring, but running from opposition, at 40, what style do you think that he has going into this fight? Because boxers, professional boxers, couldn't lay a glove on him. Listen, Floyd Mayweather, his, it is incongruous his fighting... Okay, what does that mean? Okay, sorry, my <laughs> No, no, serious. It is... It does not... They don't match up. Okay. The way he lives his life and the way he fights. He lives his life so recklessly. 
and so extravagantly. And uh, I think outside of the ring, if you want to say he's a bad guy, not in a positive way, not like that's a bad man, but that's a bad dude, I think you have reason to say it. So he, but inside the ring, he's like the most, like an OCD artist. Very like calculated. So calculated and so precise and so, and he thinks so many moves ahead, like a great chess player. And so it, if, Floyd were a different style of fighter. If it were... If he was a brawler. If it was maybe Manny Pacquiao. Like, Manny, not today, but Manny right. Pacquiao mm -hmm. when he was a few years younger. Maybe I'd be like, hey, Connor, like, Manny might say, I want to knock you out. Floyd ain't interested in knocking nobody out. Floyd is interested in being able to go to the club after the fight, not looking like he was just in a fight. Which is why his, his fights, unless you are a boxing nerd, are not that fun to watch. They're not that interesting. It's why if you've been at one of the fights, the crowd sometimes thinks the other guy's beating Floyd. Because when you're sitting 40 rows back, it's like, wow, he's throwing a lot more punches. But they're hitting elbows, they're hitting shoulders, they're hitting gloves. And then Floyd just, bap, bap, a couple of those. You can't hit him. So McGregor's never had to do that. Like, the, I, I, I'm honest when I say this. When, when I heard this fight might happen, I remember, I remember talking to a buddy of mine the first time it ever came up. I was like, oh, so they're going to, like, combine the rules. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't right. take someone to the ground, right. but you can kick. So, like, if you were to do it's a boxing now, match. that's what I would like to see. That would be a fair fight. Because Floyd's not ready to kick, doesn't know how to take a kick. But the idea that you're going to be able to box, what are we talking about here? Trying to debate someone who don't speak the language. Like, what are we, what are we talking about here other than it's big names? And... We'll be there, right? Oh, I mean, <laughs> Dana White. Oh, I'm, I'm right outside the cage. I'm, but I don't think da it won't be in a cage. I don't think that's the yeah, only. That's I, my only skepticism about this. You don't. Do you think Dana White's gonna let it happen? Well, I don't. Dana White, listen to me. I need the same seats that I was sitting at the last Ronda Rousey fight. Okay? Yeah. Right where the fighters enter the ring, I need to be right there on the camera side. You know how you book them. I need two or three seats. Right there on the camera side. I need two for you and your wife. You're going to join us. Appreciate you, Cece. Can I? Oh, <laughs> Ella, oh, oh, Ella just got totally okay. left by the You're a member of the family. Yeah. Uh, we can get you in. Can, I'll consider it my Valentine's Day can, gift. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I make a, a, a bit of a turn from this? Because we both agree that Mayweather would win. I think we both agree. Listen, if you want to. But I do believe Connor does have a chance. I, uh, you do? Yes. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Crazy always got a chance. And Connor's got that. Yeah, but like, okay. All right, I mean, I, I don't know how to argue with crazy as a chance. <laughs> but why would Dana White book the fight? I don't think, I think Dana White's going to try to fight the fight being booked. I think I, if, if... That's part of the disconnect with this press release, huh? With, with this story, is like they said there's a third party. If I'm looking at the story, it says there's a third party holdup. The third party holdup could be UFC president Dana White. But if I'm Conor McGregor and Dana White says, you do this, you're done with the UFC forever. Well, if he's making five, six million a fight in the UFC... And he can make forty million in this fight. Like, okay, I'm done with this forever. I can go to the WWE for a couple years. I can retire. Like, I can, mm -hmm. I can be done getting my head punched in for a living. I, I do think that there is. It's interesting because the UFC is right now so much more popular than boxing because it has a structure. Like, I've been a believer for a long time, and it just whenever I think of Mayweather, I think of this because once Mayweather's gone. There is no giant name in boxing. There's Gennady Golovkin. There's, a, you know, there's, mm -hmm. I guess, still the clitch goes to a degree. Right. But there's not one guy that can demand $100 million for a fight. Once he's done, if we had a group of billionaires come together and say, hey, we are going to buy out everyone's contract. We are going to, we, everyone that's contract, WBO, WBC, HBO, Showtime, we're buying them all out. We're, that's a sunk cost. We're paying for it. And we are going to set up a boxing league the way the UFC is set up. One pay-per-view a month. We have rankings. We have standings. You know if you're the fourth-ranked middleweight, you're, you're fighting the fifth-ranked middleweight, the winner gets a title shot. People, I think, would come back to the sport. The reason the UFC has taken off while boxing is going down is because it's like, oh, he, this guy has this belt and this, this, the WBO, this guy has the WBC. We don't know if fights are ever going to happen. Guys can go two years without fighting. Like, Dana White deserves a ton of credit for how he's run the UFC. If once Floyd's done, if this is Floyd, gets to 50 and 0, gets another $100 million, I think boxing would have an opening to try to copy the UFC model, and I think it'd be super popular. Well, if this fight happens, Dana, 
Call Cece. Yeah. No mercy. Hey, guys, Skip has a word about Harry's. That's right, Joy. Harry's was started by two guys who were fed up with being overcharged for razors. So they decided to start their own razor company to give guys what they deserve, a great shave at a fair price. They bought a factory with 100 years of blade-making experience so they could make their own high-quality razors, sell them online, and ship them directly to you for half the price of the leading brand. Harry's razors include everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. Five German-engineered blades, a lubricating strip, a flex hinge for a comfortable glide, a trimmer blade, and a weighted ergonomic handle. All of that for just two bucks a blade compared to the four or more you'll pay at a drugstore. If you're like me, you don't have time to spend shopping. I'm up early working out. I do my show Undisputed. Then I've got games to watch and the next day's show prep to do. I love the convenience of a good product being delivered straight to me. Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they want you to try their most popular trial set for free. It comes with a razor handle of your choice, a five-blade cartridge, and shaving gel, all for free when you sign up. Just pay a small fee for shipping. To get it, just go to harrys.com undisputed. Thanks, Skip. Again, that's harrys.com slash undisputed for a free trial set when you sign up with Harry's. Now back to the show. No mercy. Tom Brady won his fifth Super Bowl over a week ago. He just finished his 17th season, but at 39 years old, he's not showing any signs of retirement. Brady posted on Instagram, It's hard to believe a week has passed since Super Bowl 51. It's hard to believe the game is only 60 minutes. It's harder to believe I've been a Patriot for 17 years. What happens on that field with my teammates, in front of our family and fans, is almost impossible to describe. It's mythical for me, and yet it's real. And it's why I'll never stop as long as I'm able. Nick, Tom Brady will be 40 before next season starts. How many great years does Tom have left? I think Tom Brady, I guess it depends on how you define great, I think he can be one of the four best quarterbacks in the league for the next at least three years and one of the seven or eight best quarterbacks in the league for the next eight or for the next five years, pardon me. I think I think we're really looking at a player that's going to break all the statistical norms. He is, you can make the argument that the greatest three-year stretch of his career are these last three years. Like prior to these last three years, it probably would have been 2010, 2011, 2012. He won an MVP in that stretch. He made a Super Bowl. He had 109 touchdowns, 24 picks in that stretch. His team was 39-9. and nine. These last three years, 97 touchdowns, 18 picks, almost an identical passer rating. The team's 35-9. and nine. So he doesn't – the playoffs were a bit of an outlier in how often he got hit. He doesn't get hit very often. He takes care of his body unlike any athlete that I know of in the NFL, and he doesn't seem to be slowing down – so why wouldn't he have five more excellent years left in him? Um, father time. Father time is undefeated. Now, Brady's holding him off. Modern-day medicine, technology, all those things. But eventually, father time is going to win. I believe five years is a little too far. I believe he has two great years left in him. Now, if he decides to play after that, he's in, the, he's in that realm of players that regardless if they're past their prime. Like, we don't mind them watching. So I wouldn't be surprised if he played four years, but I'll give him two years at playing great. And sometimes, as an athlete, you don't recognize, you realize there's some things that you can't do that you used to be able to do, but sometimes as an athlete, you wake up in the morning, and I played until I was 37. I played 16 years in the NFL, and you wake up and realize, you know something? I'm getting ready to start doing something else. Now, Tom Brady, he has a number of things on his side. Number one thing is he has an organization that has a championship atmosphere. So he has that cart in front of the horse every time he goes to work. Also, from an intellectual standpoint, it's hard to be stimulated in an NFL locker room with young players as far as what they're listening to, the things they're interested in doing on a regular basis. So how does Tom Brady turn his brain on so that he can stay interested. That's Bill Belichick. They have one of the, mo the most diverse game plans week in and week out. So that keeps Tom on his toes. One week they run the ball 50 times. 
The next week, they got a whole different game plan. They're throwing the ball 50 times. So I believe that will help Tom Brady out. But eventually, Father Time is undefeated, and I believe he'll come see Tom Brady at the age of 43. If you look at some of the other greats that have recently retired, that being Brett Favre, not in a great situation, body was banged up, shoulder was banged up, Peyton Manning, he couldn't play at the high level anymore. Elway had asked him to take a pay cut the year before, so he went out on top, winning the Super Bowl with a defensive-dominated team. So I could see Tom doing it because we've seen other versions of Tom, but they didn't have the situation or they didn't have the health at 40 that Tom had. Now, where, where I'm going to jump in on that, though, is I view Tom as different from some of the ones that you've mentioned who were able to make runs kind of later in age and battling against Father Time. And the reason for that is when I think about people who are really elite at whatever it is that they do, whether it's athletic or it's a business endeavor, they have almost a sociopathic nature to the way yes. they go about things. And when I think about Tom, I think about a guy who has struggled his regimen entirely around being able to play for as long as he possibly can. He's playing the long game here. I mean, we're talking about a guy who only has tomatoes once a month, yeah. whose cheat meal is quinoa and avocado ice cream. You know what I mean? If there is he any- He goes to bed at nine o'clock. 8.30. Okay, 8.30. 8.30. He rarely drinks alcohol. Yeah. Like you mentioned Favre and Manning. The, and Favre, you know, at his age 40 season, took the Vikings to the conference championship game yes. and was maybe a pick away from going to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. We all know what Pey Peyton Manning at his age 37 season won the MVP yes. and then won a Super Bowl in his age 40 season. The difference there is Favre didn't. Favre's body was, as we've seen, is how he's aged post-career. Like, he was an old man's body from some yes. of, I think, the partying early on his, in his career especially. And Peyton had the massive neck trauma, mm -hmm. if you yes. will. Mm -hmm. The guy that I want to compare him to is your former teammate, Warren Moon. Oh, yeah. Warren Moon, age 39, with you on the team, 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns. Warren Moon then goes to Seattle, age 41, throws for 3,700 yards. That was 20 years ago. So if you fast forward all the upgrades we've had in medicine, how much smarter athletes are now about mm -hmm. what they eat, what they put in their body, their regimens. Like, if Warren Moon, as you can attest to much better than me, athletic freak. This athletic. is a guy that is... A genetic marvel. Gen and Brady doesn't appear to be the physical athletic freak. Right. But mentally, he does. Absolutely. Married to a supermodel, yet doesn't go out and party. Almost never drinks alcohol. Elika said, 8.30 bedtime. He, you know, he, he's so... So if anyone can do it, like the special guys... That whether it's Ali coming back to win the title, Jordan, people laugh at Jordan's years with the Wizards. Jordan's final year in the league, age 39. You know how many games he missed? None. You know how many <laughs> minutes a game he played? 37. Yes. He, played, he had the 18th most points in the league when he was 39 years old with the Wizards. So to me, Brady's in that echelon of all-timer. So I, if he's saying the only thing to me that would stop Tom Brady, CC is if he wants to stop. He don't seem like he wants to stop. I think, I think there are two things to keep in mind. You brought up Belichick earlier. I have a feeling Brady and Belichick are going to make their departures at the same time because I think it kind of goes hand in hand with working with a coach and an organization who's on board to making sure they're playing to your strengths, that they're putting pieces around you that you need in order to stay protected, in order to stay healthy. I think the other thing, too, is Tom Brady this year missed four games. You know, not because right. he was injured, yes. but be but he still got four less games in which he was taking any sort of beating or impact on his body. So I think when you when you factor that, is that how do you utilize that moving forward in terms of your game plan when you're playing the long game? Yeah. Well, I think one of the number one things, and I believe it's underrated, is the limelight. That light that's shining on you as mm -hmm. a star in the NFL, the NBA, or whatever sport or profession, it's hard to come out of the light. Did you see Tom Brady get that trophy? Yeah. Did you? Now, how are you going to turn that off? Because regardless of what he does the rest of his life, I've had some exciting jobs. I've had a great life. But nothing was like playing in the National Football League. And I just think it's very, very disrespectful to someone who has earned, I've earned the right to be in the light. So I've earned a, a right to be in the light as long as the light will shine. So I'm all for Tom Brady playing as long as possible because I know that the roar of the crowd is a drug to the athlete. And when you when you stop playing, you tell me if I'm wrong here. You never got sick of Sundays. 
No. But the Monday through Saturday in year 16 started to become a pain in the ass. Right. right? I got tired of hearing about the young guys going to the strip club on Tuesday, and I'm trying to get all my rest and everything, or other mundane stuff, the stuff that they were involved in. Um, we had to have a, 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 a what's your name, a, a game station set up in the locker room. I'm like, oh, my goodness, we need a reading station for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but things like that. The day-to-day -day became tedious or mundane or aggravating yes. and the you. training the tr getting your body ready i steve nash had a great piece a few years ago when he was trying to make his final comeback with the lakers and his point was i can still be one of the best players in the league once a week the problem is i need to be one of the best three days a week and what it takes out of my body to get ready i'm out i'm not in i've got other interests the thing with brady he seems to love the process. He was on uh, the radio today with Mike Florio this morning, and he talked about how he's just going to keep training year-round. He's yeah. like, I love it. I'm going to have oh, my absolutely. arm ready year-round. When that's your mentality, that might add another couple years to the end of it. Like, I really do think it's on the board that Tom Brady at age 45 is quarterbacking a 10-6 and six Patriots. And team. this is the thing, Elika, that you have to realize. If he avoids injury, because all these people we talked about. Right. If you get injured when you're older, you just don't back, bounce back like you used to. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing, that's the one caveat in this that we can't see. Right? I agree. And I think it depends on the severity of the injury and what type it is because I think um, your overall health, the way you bounce back from those things are the uh, manifestation of all the micro decisions that yes, you make that lead up to throughout it. an entire career. What type of shape you're in the mm -hmm. day you get hurt leads to the recovery and, time. Yep. And the, the, your 98 season, you played that year with a couple torn calf muscles. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. yes. If that had happened in the 01 season, you can't play through it, right? Like, that was that was a ba yes. about as late in your career as you could have played through something like that. What's working in Brady's favor is we've never really seen nagging injuries with him. He has the one blown-out knee from Bernard Pollard. Other than that, he's been a bastion of health, much like Eli and much like Peyton prior to the next race. Pollard was in Kansas City, right? Pollard was in Kansas City. Oh, okay, now. I was just saying your team. No mercy. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook will be teammates again this weekend at the NBA All-Star Game. The two had a heated exchange on Saturday. Steve Kerr is coaching the Western Conference team and talked about the former teammates. Kerr said, maybe we'll sing a song together. To be honest, I haven't read much about it, so I don't know what they're saying to each other or at each other. I think if anything, this might be a great opportunity to sit down and talk, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen in New Orleans. Chris, what will happen with Durant and Westbrook on the court together this weekend? Well, number one, Steve Kerr was not talking to Russell. He was talking to KD because he knows better than to go to Russell because Russell doesn't have a problem. Russell wasn't the one who left OKC. He actually, months after, um, or within months after KD leaving, he re-upped for a couple more years. So in contrary to someone who wants to get out of town, Russell told the people, no, I want to stay here. I want this organization to be built around me and this basketball team to be built around me. Now, Steve Kerr, it's in his best interest because Kevin, he's not a confrontational guy. So it's in his best interest that Kevin's able to get it behind him. I think Russell, he's one of them kind of guys, he's going to always be petty about it. I think that he just, he's the type of competitor that he felt slighted when Kevin Durant decided to tell people that he talked to him and he didn't actually talk to him. He had actually sent him a text that he would want to sit down and talk to him because if he could do it all over again, he would do it different. You know, so for me, it kind of gives you a little insight into how KD and maybe KD wants to talk to him because I know Kerr has no insight of how Russell feels. So the question is, how will, how will they interact on the court together? My question is, will they be on the court together? Like, are we totally confident? Yes. That Durant's not, that when Kerr asked Durant, how do you want to do this? That Durant's response isn't going to be, hey, just keep us out the game. Like, when I'm on, he's off. When he's on, I'm off. Like, why, we don't, we don't need to, we don't need to share minutes. Like, because you're right. I love Russ. He's my second most enjoyed player to, player to watch in the league. But Russ is petty. Russ, since Durant has left, Instagram cupcakes the day he left. He did a, an ad with Nike, kind of went under the radar where he dunks, and it, the, the voiceover goes, some people run, some people make runways. Like, that's at, that's at KD. Mm -hmm. he, he talked about the 
th threw shade at Durant's quote about, he said, we'll worry about our selfish guys over here. He did the now I do what I want commercial. He wore the photographer outfit. He shoved Durant at midcourt just a couple days ago. Like, are we sure Durant wants those potential problems? And if Durant said, I, 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 again, this is just, just pure speculation. I'm admitting that. It's not reporting anything. Right. If Kerr were to ask Durant, how do you want me to handle this? And Durant were to say, I just don't want to play with him. Like, wait, I'm, we're not dealing with that on national television in front right. of everybody. What do I do if he whips the ball at my head? Don't you think Kerr would respect that? Like, if Durant says to him, I don't want to play in the same game with Russell. Right. I think Durant is way above that, though. Really? I, and I think that he has such a basketball gift that we're, we're missing this. Like, he's having an unbelievable season. He is. He's taking less shots. He's shooting the highest percentage. Yes, Russ and them, they, they, Russ might be petty, but, man, this is clearly one of the greatest basketball players that I've ever seen. And we've had other stuff in the All-Star game, Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, yeah. things like that. So it's not the first time, and I know Kerr realizes that. The game is bigger than the players. And even though it's the All-Star game, people are coming there to see basketball. And I believe that Kevin Durant, the type of person he is, the type of integrity that he has, I believe that he's above that. And I believe that he'll play on the court during All-Star Week with anyone. So I don't think that he's going to tell Steve Kerr, no, I don't want to play I don't with think Russ. it would be a – and again, I'm not questioning Durant's integrity. I, I just think it might – for a guy who – I'm talking about sports integrity. Okay, fair. All right, appreciate that. that that's a, I get the clarification then. The, for a guy who seems conflict-averse – for a guy who didn't want to make the phone call, mm -hmm. for a guy who ha hasn't dealt with this head on, and I get it, some people that passivity is their way, and like he's not passive on the basketball court, that's for damn sure, he's unbelievable. When that seems to be his M.O., it just wouldn't shock me at all if that continues to, nah, I don't, I don't need to deal with this with 30 million people watching, like, we're good. We don't have to. We well, played nine years ago. I, I think a lot has been made of Kevin Durant's non-confrontational nature because that's the way we saw his mm -hmm. departure play out. But I think that one thing that's been missed is KD strikes me as a guy who also cares what people think about him mm -hmm. oh, yes. much more so than Russell, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think if there is going to be some sort of decision to be made as to whether or not they'll be on the court together at the mm -hmm. same time, I think what's going to play into that for KD isn't necessarily whether or not he wants to risk a confrontation with Russ on the court. It's how is that going to look if it seems but like... It's, it's a great point. Like, he was worried about the public perception. But in that vein, Durant is wishy-washy. Durant, right after the game against the Thunder, on the court, said, I thought they'd be louder, meaning they being the crowd. Mm -hmm. In the post-game press conference, 14 minutes later, at the podium, said... It's the loudest I've ever heard this building. Like, he's, he sometimes can't keep it, – it's when you are trying to – we saw it with LeBron the first year with the Heat when he mm -hmm. was like, do I want to be the villain? Do I not want to be the villain? When you are trying to really d figure out who you are in this phase of your life, it's something I think all of us have gone through at certain points in time. I Not to reveal any secrets, but, like, CeCe and I had, a, I, I would say, a very personal moment off the air at one of our homes a few months back where Chris talked to me about how, how comfortable he is in his own skin in this point in his life. And my and, imperfection. And, exactly right. And I told you the truth. I ain't there yet. Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm about 20 years younger than you. I, I still deal with my own stuff. Like, I strive to be there. So I'm not throwing shade at Durant for not being a fully defined person at this point in his life. I think it's hard, especially when you're in the public eye. But given the fact that he can flip-flop 15 minutes to the next... Does he know what's best? Like, don't, don't you think it's possible? He's like, man, maybe we'll just play and get it all behind us. And then the other part of it, the you know, devil on his shoulder, angel on his shoulder is like, right. well, what if we play and, you know, Russ throws it to me, I throw it back to him, he throws it back. Like, there's, I think there's a lot of concern there. It just, I think it's on the board that they don't play together. Do you think immediately after the fact, though, when he's on the court and he says, I thought it would be louder, that was more of like a gut reaction to, he hyped up this moment probably so big in his head because he cares about the way that he left and texted Russ instead of having a conversation with him that he knew he was going to be called Cupcake. Like, he probably built it up so far in his head that it didn't match up to what he had built right. up. And behind the scenes, Kevin Durant really cares. Mm -hmm. He's upset at really the organization. Mm -hmm. He's upset that he thought that they might play a video, a tribute. Um, he's donated a bunch of money to charities in the OKC area. And he thought that that would supersede his decision to leave. 
But what I think is important for Steve Kerr, and if I was the coach, I'm not concerned about Russ. I'm concerned about my franchise player, and I'm the head coach of the All-Star game. It's going down my way. I got my support staff as far as the coaches there, probably the training staff. I got three other Warriors on the team, so Russ can act however he wants to act. I'm going to make sure that my guy, KD, feels comfortable because he is, he's is—he's got that kind of game, and I believe that it's worthy to make sure you take care of him. Russ will take care of himself, it, but you must take care of KD. All right, can I make one request then for Steve Kerr? Go ahead. If you're watching, I know Steve Kerr's a big fan of FS1. <laughs> if you are going to play Durant and Westbrook at the same time, then just go all in and put Russ in with the four Warriors. Like, just go all for it. Like, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Durant. You, the, you know it, it, those four are going to play together at one point in time. Right. The fifth guy, what's it most interesting is if it's Mark Gasol, bump that. Make it Russ. Like, let's just see what the hell happens. Like, let's just see if, like, Russ, the whole he gotta time. you got to pass the one of them. Or, or maybe not. Well, have you seen Russ the last All-Star game, the last couple? He's getting gunning for MVPs, bro. Every time, from the warm-ups on. Yeah, Russ, exactly. is, Russ is about himself. So if we are going to, and we say that in a nice way, we love Russ. If, if we are going to see Durant and Russ on the court at the same time, Put, put Russ with all four of them and see what the hell happens. I That's think we just created with. a reality show here. Oh, I'm all, all I'm, four I'm of the Warriors are go stand in the corner Four and by themselves and Russ. No mercy. We have breaking news. The Cavs just announced that Kevin Love underwent arthroscopic knee surgery on his left knee this morning and is expected to miss six weeks. Love had an MRI on Sunday after complaining about soreness and swelling. We're joined by Chris Broussard. Chris, how concerned should the Cavs be? Well... I mean, you, you don't want to miss one of your best players, your third best player for six weeks. Chemistry is important. You want to be going into the playoffs with everybody clicking on the 12 cylinders. Uh, he'll be back probably with two weeks left in the regular season. I'm very confident they still win the East. Um, now, Toronto, according to the vertical, just traded for Serge Ibaka for Terrence Ross in the first round pick. So... That makes Toronto better. They needed a front court guy. Now he plays with Jonas Valanciunas. They're going to be tough. They're going to be physical. Cleveland, obviously, you lose rebounding with love. Um, but with LeBron and Kyrie, I, I still think they win the East. And look, in the finals last year, Kevin Love only averaged seven points and six rebounds. <laughs> and he only played 22 minutes a game. So they're still a great team without him. Um, it's just unfortunate for them because he was really having a good season and now they won't be clicking. The, so if you're the Cavs, especially with this news and the fact that I know you and I talked yesterday and you said like the Rockets are even going to finish with a better record than the Cavs. They, they, well, right they're, now they're, they're right. They're pace, close. Yeah. But yeah. The, the Cavs are not going to finish with a better record than the Spurs or the Warriors. True, I think right. there I think there is a better than nine out of ten chance that it's the Spurs or the Warriors in the finals. Right. So you're not gonna, you're gonna not. If you're the Cleveland, no matter what you do the rest of the way, you're not gonna have home court in the finals. You don't need home court in the Eastern Conference Finals. LeBron's won at least one road game Agreed. in every Eastern Conference series he's ever played his whole career. Like you don't need. They, a home they won the finals last year without home court advantage. Right. He mm -hmm. he so, wins the, yeah. the only series he's ever played where he didn't win at least one road game was when they got swept by San Antonio a decade ago. So, I do think the one – I'm not worried about the Cats. Yeah. I do think you should maybe, though, now have a meeting of the minds of Griff and Lou and LeBron and Kyrie and say, guys, are we cool with the three seed? Like, do we – Oh, you mean in the league? It, no, no, in, in the, the East. East. Like, do we want to – do we – if Kevin Love's out six weeks, do we want to give LeBron two weeks off at some point? Do we want to give Kyrie three or four games off? Like, LeBron's leading the league in minutes. We're now, all of a sudden, without one of our three best players, one of our all-stars. Mm -hmm. we, we, if we really push it, we can stave off Boston while Kevin Love's out. But mm -hmm. is it worth it? That's the conversation I would be having right now if I were Cleveland. But it's also, it's not, it's just not Kevin Love. It's not breaking news. Kevin Love is having knee surgery, going to be out six weeks. It's also, Cleveland is lo losing their second starter. Because JR is still out yep. for at least another yep. six weeks. So it's the totality of both of them. So you can't talk about Cleveland because these guys, you can say Kevin Love only averaged a certain number of points, certain number of rebounds. But to me, I believe people like Kevin Love and people like JR Smith, they are the glue that makes Cleveland special. Yep. And you have to have knockdown shooters around LeBron and Kyrie. 
LeBron, that's been his whole history, all right? When he's had success is when he has these knockdown shooters. That's one of the reasons why they wouldn't trade Kevin Love for Melo, because his ability to spot up and shoot, that first quarter scoring, where do they go? Does LeBron have to play harder early in the games? Because Kevin Love is fourth in the NBA in first quarter scoring. So when you don't have a player like that, you can say, oh, we're going to the finals, but it has an effect on the rest of that roster, and it's going to have an effect on LeBron. So what, what do you think this means for them? To, now is it up in winning the East? Is that in jeopardy, you feel like? Um, I still think they're going to be right there to win the East. You know, they're going to have to do it a different type of way. Tyron, Tyron Lue, it's going to put extra strain on his yeah. plate. Offensively, how are we going to match up with people? What type of style are we going to run? And defensively, you know, our matchups and our switches, how are we going to come up with that um, with that solution going down the stretch? Because they're going to have to switch once they get Kevin back into the lineup. The, listen, the, the Cavs, much like we've discussed the Warriors, it's all about winning the title. Nothing else yeah. matters. Mm -hmm. The Cavs, it's similar, but there's a little extra nuance there. Here's what matters for the Cleveland Cavaliers. In Game 7 of the NBA Finals with three minutes left, does LeBron James have enough juice in the tank to go 70 feet in six steps and glass Iguodala? Is LeBron James used up come the NBA Finals, or is he playing arguably the best three games of his life the final three games of the year, when we already know the re we already know nobody since Russell's Celtics have gone to more than four straight finals. LeBron's gone to six straight and is trying to make it seven straight. That's what matters. What ma you can get through the East no matter what, and it's not because the East is terrible. It's because LeBron's the best. Although it is bad. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, well, hold <laughs> it on. is bad. It's I bad. mean, I mean, look. I, I don't take that any, can't be a yeah. Goal, right? You don't take anything away from LeBron's accomplishment of getting to what six straight finals. Mm -hmm. But the East is pretty weak. Okay. It's very weak. Well, if he was in the West, he wouldn't have gone to six straight. Okay. Five. Well, there's right now. Well, it's just like New England dominating their division. It, that's not their fault. Yeah. Okay. I'm not blaming him, but it, it's weak. He's so, had by far the most talented team every year. So because he's on it, and you said yesterday yeah, that if but he was also on other any guys, other team, he'd have gone. Yeah. I mean, uh, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. And, and I'm fairly certain... <laughs> Kevin this, Love and Kyrie. And I'm Cleveland. fairly certain in the West this year, a team that, like, the team pacing to make the eight seed in the West will be the worst team to ever make the playoffs. What's it look like at the top, at the, the very, It's, it's a the lot very more top, top of the heavy. West. The very top the of the East West. is... It, it got a lot of better. good teams. It's a bunch of mediocre teams. I would say... what it is. Sure. A couple but, pretty good teams, and then the Cavs uh, were head and shoulders above them. And top. so the, the... But that's almost a side note, right? Because yeah. we're talking about what the Cavs... What, what their attitude should be about the rest of this season. Mm -hmm. It can't be about... I, I, listen. It shouldn't I, have been... Not to, I know where you go. Shouldn't it shouldn't have been that from the beginning. LeBron should not be leading the league in minutes. That's mm -hmm. the question. Why in the world is that happening? And like you said, does he take two weeks off? Or do you just... Let's make a concerted effort to chop the minutes. Now, I think LeBron wants to play. I think he, look, he loves I the game. I think he's MVP. enjoying playing. Yeah. He's not going to win well, it this year. If all the voters were like no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> but I think at the beginning of the year, yeah, I, I think, think it meant really something to him. on the board to him I think it that I can win the MVP, him. and that's one of the reasons his minutes were high. The other Because he's stacking up. Right. He knows he's going after the GOAT. The other reason his minutes are high is when they're off the when he's not on the court, this Cavs team gets outscored four yeah. and a half points per 100 possessions. Like, mm -hmm. So they need him. But I just, CeCe, this is not, this is, I think it goes against the competitive nature of pro athletes to say, hey, let's all take a step back now that Kevin Love's out. But I think it might be the smart thing, right? Like, it might be the smart thing to get these guys. LeBron has played more minutes since last six years than any player in a six-year stretch in modern NBA history. Like, let's all take a break for a little well, bit. LeBron understands he doesn't need, to your point, the first seed to win the East or to win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He's won 60-plus games three times in his career. Only once did they win the finals, right. you know, in that mm -hmm. year. He's won 57 games and won two championships. So I agree with you that they, they do need to, you know, to think about that. Let me throw this out, and I'm not saying I would do it, but with this injury news, if you're Cleveland, do you even consider Carmelo for Kevin Love? Do you, does it make you think? Because we know they want to win now. I'm long-term, and I look at Kyrie. But you know, that, you know what LeBron's thinking. Let's get him now. Oh, oh, LeBron, don't do it to me. I, <laughs> I'm I not just, saying they, I, they would, he wants I to just, do it, I'm just. Melo doesn't do anything for me. 
All right? He really does. I've seen players like him. I, I, I like Melo, but Melo was about his money. All right? When he decided to sign that contract with New York, he told me something about him, that the money was more important than the championships. The reason why he got the no-trade call, because he wanted to stay in New York. So he wasn't concerned about winning. So now all of a sudden, that, uh, because I'm with LeBron, I'm concerned about winning? Eh, not so much for I, me. The, listen, Melo was going to get paid no matter what. Yes. I, I, Although, he, well, I'll say this on, uh, to his credit. He was going to leave $50 million on the table that, if he had gone to L.A. or Chicago. Isn't that a little mis... It was $50 million, but it was also a year... So like he would so you would have got so maybe got more like twenty five million. million or something. Yeah, so yeah. I mean he's gonna yeah. you're right it was the most financially benefit yeah. for, the biggest financial benefit was to stay in New York but it was everyone's gonna offer him a max it's just mm. a difference of whether or not you can get the five years versus the yeah, four years yeah. I think the big thing with New York with New York and Melo to be totally honest his wife I think he's and I and I don't begrudge him this at all like I I make decisions about where I'm gonna live based on you know what my wife likes and where she wants to live like I la la wants to be in New York. Mm -hmm. And, like, she's got her own career, and that matters. And I don't begrudge him that, as CC laughs at me. Oh, yeah. No, a little bit my family I'm, situation. I'm calling Danielle right. after the show. Yeah. So, <laughs> Check in with her on this. So, the, but as far as to answer your question, would you do love for Melo? Because I do think even with love being injured, the Knicks would still do it. The Knicks know they're not yeah. making the playoffs this year. Which they I think would, is a Knicks. mistake on their part, but I agree with I you. I think they would do it. I think Phil is so yeah. out on Melo, he would do it. I... Listen, I went to Syracuse. I think Melo is unfairly maligned. Were you there with but him? Missed him by a semester. They won it in oh, spring of 03. I he was only there a semester. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, <laughs> I missed it. You were there the second semester <laughs> of his freshman year. Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, but, like, let people forget Melo was the best player on a team yes, that made a conference finals. Mm -hmm. Something a guy we all love, Chris Paul, has never done. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, this I'm idea that Melo is some stat-chasing loser is not fair. He is a flawed player, though. And Melo, it's been almost a decade since he's played in a really big game. Well, that, remember a couple years ago, they went they to the, the second they round. They made the second round. And I Tough think they series lost with in Indiana, yeah. lost in six. So, the, so okay. So he was actually in the, He actually got, as, as misguided as it was, one MVP vote that year. Yeah. That was the way. Yeah, that was My the, man Gary Washburn, right. Boston right. Globe. That was the reason LeBron won unanimous MVP. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's the kind of luck Melo has. <laughs> no, seriously, that's the kind of luck he has. They win the biggest game of this season against San Antonio at home, but all people are talking exactly. about is the owner, Dolan, yeah. yep. and, and Oakley. Yep. So that's the that's Melo but, at Syracuse. Right, okay. <laughs> but the point that I'm making is like, as much as I like Melo, we know that even though Kevin Love not that effective against the Warriors. You were right. Like, he didn't play that much yeah. in the finals. He missed game three. They won it by 30. He was yeah. in foul trouble in game six and barely played in that game. Because they, he had that one play, everybody thinks he was great. Well, no, right. We stayed in All front Steph of All Steph had to do was, instead of crossing back over twice, he yeah. should have went on it. Well, and, well, the thing was <laughs> that people miss on that play, Steph wasn't trying to go by him. That's the problem. He just wanted to shoot a three. And if he wanted to go by him, he could have went by him like that. Steph admitted it after the game. I was three chasing there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so with all that said, I know he's not super effective against the Warriors. I think the Cavs will be fine with or without yeah. him. I just, because... I know I'm a man on an island here that still believes the Cavs are the favorite to win the title. I think adding a guy like Melo, that you can't add Melo and say, hey, you're going to play 18 minutes a game. You're going to come off the bench. You will want him to play 18 minutes? No, I'm saying you can't do that. You can't add Melo and say, hey, you're going to be... In this scenario, though, it'd be a trade Cor for a love, so he correct. would get That's my That's, that's the point minutes. that I'm making, yeah. is that if, because if you add Melo, you are changing the chemistry of this yeah. team drastically. Even though I don't think Melo's some loser, it would, if you just won the title with this core, minus Della Vadova and Mozgov, mm -hmm. the only guys you don't have back, you added Korver, adding Melo is such an X factor. It's a big change. And yeah. I just, even with Love being out six weeks, it would scare me. If the news was Love is done for the year, then maybe you could have the discussion. Like, and I think the Knicks, again, would still do it because they just want the draft yeah, pick and yeah. Love's actually on a decent contract moving yeah. forward. I got a proposal for him. What's Dolan, that? package, <laughs> package, Dolan's Mello. part of the no, deal. No, yeah, but he's, he's the owner. Oh, he runs yeah. the Madison Square Garden. Um, let me have Melo. 
and throw in Oakley, and we'll send you Kevin Love. Straight up. Oakley? Yeah, we got, yeah, we need some for, yeah, he'll, he'll be held against the Warriors. Yeah. No, I think Oakley as, be As mad as he is, I, I talked to him this morning, he's still mad. Yeah. No mercy. The Warriors lost by 22 last night in Denver. The Nuggets tied an NBA record with 24 three-pointers. Steph Curry only scored 11 points and was one for 11 on threes. It was the Warriors' ninth loss of the year. They lost nine games all of last year. Take a listen to Steph after the game. So I was a shot didn't fall. Yeah, pretty good warm-up today. Felt, felt really good. The shots didn't fall. Um, and obviously they hit everything, and it was tough to to get back in it. But like I said, it was one of those nights where I felt confident. Every shot I took felt like it was going in. Just got served a uh, humble slice of cupcake, and that's it. We're joined by Jim Jackson. Jim, are this year's Warriors as good as last year's Warriors? No. I mean, they're not. It's, it's a different makeup just because of the roles, especially the complimentary players have made. Yes, you added Kevin Durant, who, who could be in a conversation for MVP as well. But what you've taken away is the continuity from, in particular, second unit. I think when you put JaVale McGee into the lineup, instead of like an Andrew Bogut, mm -hmm. who was a better playmaker, he complimented, I think, the starting five a lot better. Festus Azili did his job, Leandro Barbosa, Barbosa. It was different. Even Harrison Barnes, even though he struggled at times in the final, their makeup and their chemistry was much better. Now, does that mean that the, the Warriors won't get to the final? No. But when you compare last year's team in regards to individual parts, I think last year's team was better from that perspective than this year. I think last year's team, when you saw them play, you knew there was something magical about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Not only just the wins and not only the huge deficits um, that they had on opposition, but the way they passed yeah. the ball, mm -hmm. the fun they were having. And Nick, you talked about it was a style that we had never seen be successful long term. So the overall magic they traded that in when they went for KD and the overall chemistry. I know this team is not better than the other team. So it's not a matter of is the question like, is it a real question? No, they're not better. Can they get back? Can they win a championship? Yes, they can win a championship. Mm -hmm. But the mundane part of the regular season, the 82 games, getting, getting pumped up for OKC when Kevin was going back right. there, but now traveling to Denver that had won eight out of nine. So you have, you have those dips that typically, Jimmy, during the season, your bench carries you through those dips last year that they don't have this well, year. And also, too, you're getting closer to the All-Star break. Now, keep in mind, too, I think the aura around the team is different. Think about it. Last year, Steph was a transformable yep. kind of player. Yes. With KD coming on board, it's just like, well, they're Steph. Yep. So the narrative for the for goals, and plus it was going to be impossible, Nick, to, to to duplicate the excitement of what you saw in regards to winning 72, 70 plus games last year. It was the, just impossible. And so it's not just the record. Like this is, it's amazing that we are all in agreement here. When I think the general consensus nationwide is, of course, they're better. They have Kevin Durant, but we don't have to look at it on paper anymore because we got fifty five games of real live. Evidence. Mm -hmm. This Warriors team last year, they were 24 and 0. They were 36 and 2. They were 48 and 4. And then 73 and 9. This team's 46 and 9. And I already know what people are going to say. Oh, but this team with Durant, it's better suited to beat the best teams. No, it's not. And who's La the best team? Last, well, 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 we can just go by record, right? Right. Last year against the best teams in the league, the three best teams, they were 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. Against the four best teams in the league, they were 10 and 1. This year against the three best teams, against the Spurs, the Cavs, the Rockets, they're two and three. Right. So, like, and, and okay, the, all the other arguments, like people sling the arrows and knock them down. Oh, well, Steph and Clay and Draymond are going to be more well-rested. No, they're not. Last year, Steph, Clay, Draymond played combined 102 minutes a game. This year, they're playing 101 minutes a game. That 20 seconds each rest isn't going to mean anything. Like, last year, they were... Number one in offense, number four in defense. This year, they're number one in offense, number three in defense. Difference of, but oddly enough, even though their ranking's higher, they're actually allowing more points yeah. per 100 possessions this mm -hmm. year. There is the, 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 the last, CC, you said it. Last year's team, even for a guy that roots against the Warriors like I openly do, was magical. Every game they went into 
You thought it was going to take a miracle for the other team to win. From Steph hitting the half quarter mm -hmm. to beat the Thunder to the 24-game streak to start the year to Steph seemingly having no bad shot possible for him, yeah. this year's team feels like a really, really good basketball team. Not a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Well, the continuity is different, too. Keep in mind, those guys last year played together for two, three, four years, so they knew each other. This year, now, when you look at the record, a lot of times it can be misconceiving because they're trying to figure out how to play together. So in those tough games against the Houston Rockets, especially San Antonio, who has more continuity, they may drop those kind of games. But, like I said... You, you can't take away from the years that they have played together to know each other. That, to me, is the big difference. When I see especially the second unit come in, the continuity from what I saw last year and the year before is so different. And do you believe that lack of continuity plays out in a seven-game series more important? Because last year, even when Steph got nicked early in the playoffs, because of their second unit and because of their chemistry, they were able to maintain that until he was able to get more healthy because he wasn't healthy in the finals. Yeah. But he was able to get his health back. They were able to maintain it until then. Well, here's the problem is that really the serious contender, even though Houston will match up well, but they play the same kind of style, That's so right. it favors Golden State yeah. in a seven-game series. If we were back playing five games like it was early, then you sneak one on the road, it's a different story. Correct. The Clippers are not who we thought they could be. Nope. So really, the it's team you're talking about is San Antonio. And can San Antonio score enough, be healthy enough, in seven games to beat this Golden State team? I don't think they can. I don't think they'll give them what I would say an opportunity to win, but it'll make it intriguing. All right, so a couple things. One, it, 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 I, we got to stop collectively as a, as a sports-watching populace talking about Steph Curry being hurt in the finals. Here's, here's, uh, there aren't a lot of hard and fast rules in sports. Here's one of them. If you're game back from injury, you score 17 in overtime and bellow to the crowd, I'm back, you can't then four games later be like, my knee hurts. And Steph wasn't saying his knee hurts. His coach wasn't saying his knee hurts. It was right. the Golden State apologists outside that were like, oh, no, trust me, behind the scenes. Hey, guess what? 100-game season, you're going to get nicked up. It's why maybe it's a right. good thing to be your size and not Steph's size. That's the first point. Okay. Go, go ahead. No, go but ahead. I was going to say, but yeah. here's the thing. The narrative for Steph is so different. Okay, because how we view Steph, how we, it was the cuddly little guy. There's no way he should have been in there oh, yeah. in the league MVP. Mm -hmm. So his narrative and how he's judged right now. Now, as we get further along, I think that's going to change a bit. But right now, it's still, oh, what well, Steph is He's cute. the cuddliest he's the, guy. That's what Listen, I'm saying. He's the cuddliest guy that's ever <laughs> whipped his mouthpiece at a fan and been thrown out of a finals game. That's for sure. That, the, the last point that you were talking about a seven-game series, we all agree at this table. The Warriors' path to the way you remember the season of success is to win a championship. Mm -hmm. I think everyone at this table believes they're going to be playing LeBron James and the Cavs in the finals. So can you beat the Cavs is the question that matters more so than the question we're asking. Are they better than last year? Yes. Here are the, te the, the teams that have beaten LeBron in his career. The exhaustive list. Here's who they had playing center. Ben Wallace, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Dwight Howard, Tyson Chandler, Andrew Bogut. So if we are now at a place where the Warriors are not as good in the regular season, and they have removed one of the most important pieces to beating LeBron in the finals, I call me crazy, we might here be sitting in about four months and saying, man, why did the Warriors add Kevin Durant? Yeah, well, I mean... It, it's it, on the board. It's on the board, and Bogut did his job. That, fi that 15 minutes he played was very critical, him not playing. JaVel McGee is going to block shot, but from a basketball IQ perspective... JaVale McGee can get you in situations, in particular foul trouble, where he's not on the court. So now that right. rim protector is gone and it opens it back up. Also, JaVale McGee, watch him in the pick and roll. Last year and the year before that with Bogut, they used him in the pick and roll, but they also threw the ball to him at the high post where he became a playmaker. That's, that's right. And you that won't you, see you, JaVale McGee handle the ball there. You'll see him come up for the pick and roll. You'll see him try to slip, roll to the basket, go for the alley-oop. But that aspect of throwing the ball to your big man where you draw the other big man out and he's able to dish and create, that part of their game is gone. Oh, also, too, pick and pop with Maurice Spades. That part yes. of the game is gone. Is it that lot? opened up so much more for Clay and everybody else to drive. You don't have that this year. In an NBA game, you play 48 times 5, 240 minutes. Bogut, Azili, Barnes, Spates, Barbosa played 96 minutes. 
of, I'm sorry, 40% of the minutes the Warriors played last year, those guys are gone. And you mentioned Bogut. It's the playmaking's a great point because Bogut wasn't doing what McGee's doing above the rim, but that's not as important to them as the playmaking. Right. The other thing that's important, especially in a seven-game series, is how dirty Andrew Bogut's screens were. Mm. You got to run around his hips, his right. elbows. Yeah, he's a big like, dude. Yeah. He's a big dude, and, and he knows he how to play a little big. bit. Right. Well, so what? That's no. What he, of course, there's nothing worse he, than a big guy who plays small. Oh. A big dude is supposed to be big and supposed to act like he's big and bang people around. JJ, when you're when you're guarding a guy and you got a big seven footer setting a screen, is there anything worse than when they stick their hip out a little bit Man, are, and they, that little hip gets you on the hip? All the it, and it opens up, and it forces you to play defense a little bit different. And for shooters like Clay and Steph, that just Got a quick trigger anyway. Yes. Now that half a second that you got to maneuver around a guy. And again, JaVale McGee is like this. Bogut is hip-wise is like this. So now that angle coming around, like you said, is a lot different. Yeah. How to make the segment better? Invite another Buckeye. <laughs> <laughs> Just surround him. Buckeye. 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 Syracuse. <laughs> Oh, yeah. OHO. I, I'm just <laughs> surrounded by recruiting violations. <laughs> well, I, oh, man. I have no tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. This is the Skip and Shannon Undisputed podcast, where we are delivering you an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the biggest topics of the day's show. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Like us on Facebook at Undisputed on FS1. Follow on Twitter and Instagram at Undisputed and catch us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, Monday through Friday on FS1. You can find us on channel 219 on direct tv 150 on dish thanks for listening i'm your host elika sadegi undisputed is back tomorrow with chris broussard and rob parker checks back in and from all of us at undisputed we wish you all a very special valentine's day Facts, sports, one of one.